While you're forging it, you need you kind of need to watch your temperature. You don't want it to go over an orange color because uh you, you'll get a little bit too much decarburate decarburization. It's a simple steel, you know, 1084. First, I take a fuller like this, and I used it to curve the tang to give it an initial downward, you know, swoop to where it kind of hangs on your hand to where you can't, you know, it won't pull out very easy. And now I took the same fuller and I formed this notch right here in it. It's a notch for your finger to go. And I kind of smoothed this out a little bit as I went along and kept everything, you know, even. If you'll notice at the back of the tang, I've got it tapered down. And at the edge of the blade, I've got it tapered down. A correctly forged knife should taper on both ends because it increases flexibility and makes it less likely to break in use. That's why a spring is tapered on both ends.
got it? This edge and bring it down. I, I didn't understand why, but then whenever I start working, it, I see. It. So that's why you got to do that when you do your taper. Before you do your taper, and you go to a point, have your point going the opposite. Well, this is made out of 1084 steel and uh, after I forged the tang <clears throat> I went in here and took uh, this fullering tool that I made and I use it to set my plunge at the ricasso. The ricasso is the flat area of the blade right here. I set that plunge with that and then I set it on the edge of the anvil 
and cleaned it up with the hammer and brought it up just a little bit. And then I hold my my blade at an angle and come in here with the hammer at an angle and I tap out that edge all the way down. And I do that on both sides. I change my angle, pick my blade up, and hold my hammer like that when I'm coming in like this. It's kind of hard to tell on the video where I'm actually forging, I would imagine, because, you know, the hammer strikes are happening pretty fast. But <clears throat> that's the basic technique used. If you don't pick your hammer up at an angle like this when you're striking it, you'll force this edge down and it'll be off center. You won't have the edge straight in the center like that. After you uh, forge it, finish forging it, you should always anneal it. That's heated up to critical temperature where a magnet won't stick to it. And stick it in some hot ashes. That'll relieve all the forging stresses in the blade. And then after you do that, you should uh, heat it up to a critical temperature where a magnet won't stick into it. Quench it in oil. After you do that, that hardens it. You check it with a file, make sure it's hard. And you temper it in the oven. Tempering uh, relieves some of the strain caused by the quench process. It makes the steel a little more soft and ductile. And uh, then, it, then it'll make a very usable blade after you run it through a proper heat treatment process.